Hi, welcome to No Excuses, Just Reasons with Reed Mueller. Just wanted to stop by and uh, tell a story of how I became an unpaid social worker for my high school. And how that didn't really pan out for anyone. <coughs> Cosmo knows. So the school started a mentoring program when I was in 11th grade. It was some program they came up that had high schoolers mentoring the middle schoolers. It was a town of 3,000, so the building hosted middle and high school, so it was a convenient thing, right? You know what, I will say I found it odd, and I'll explain why. Since I was on a path to being a clown, I skipped class about as often as possible. It was a very small school with three major hallways. The principal spent a lot of the day walking those three hallways to make sure that clowns like myself weren't skipping biology. But you know, I can make me skipping class productive for everyone. Either I'll go get better at basketball, or I'll stay in a hallway that you aren't currently monitoring. And you know what? The system worked great my sophomore year. We didn't have one issue. How does this all tie into the mentorship program, you ask? What gripe could I possibly have? Well, my junior year, when the mentorship kicked off, I lost access to the middle school hallway, which was key to avoiding the principal, who was a good fucking dude that didn't need a clown making problems for him. And why were the high school students all of a sudden unable to walk down the middle school hallway? Talk to a couple teachers they used to have, avoid the minimum security that 2009 comfortably provided us, etc, etc. Well, th there was actually good cause for it. The issue was that high schoolers were trying to bang the middle schoolers. Now, obviously, the adults made the right move by doing this. But boy, did it make me have to get more creative in my pursuit to avoid learning about 1776 for the 12th straight year of public schooling. Hey, government, half the class can't read Hatchet? If they haven't figured out the difference between 1776 and 1787... Fuck them. They are more than happy to fight any war that you want to fight. Just let the teachers tell us you killed Kennedy. It's not gonna even matter. Every foreign exchange student knows about 18 times as much history as U.S. students. I'm getting off topic. I just mean if they wanted me to sit in class, they had to do better. My 11th grade history teacher was making us fucking color. You want me to draw a picture of slaves being freed under the 13th Amendment? Yeah, how about fuck that? I just told you which amendment it was and what it did, and you're handing me a brown colored pencil? First day at college. Oh, I'm sorry, Professor Callahan. This is just how I show that I'm understanding the materials. Okay, back to the gripe. So I lost a very strategic hallway to my wandering for a very good reason, and it was... So high schoolers wouldn't fuck middle schoolers. But we're really implementing a mentoring program to replace that? That seems counterproductive to our goals. That hallway's so important for my lifestyle. And doesn't this just bring middle schoolers and high schoolers closer together? So I'm walking into this situation already irked, obviously. So it's day one, they're announcing... Mentor, mentee, partnerships. Every other kid on the high school basketball team got a middle school basketball player or athlete. Basketball was literally all I was good for to this building. So they announced Reed Mueller, mentor, other person, mentee. Once again, be cool. Don't go out looking for identities, Boscobel. And I had never heard the name before. Which, another quick sidebar, was what I brought to a small town. You should be able to be a face in a sea of strangers, and I provided the town with a stranger. So the principal sits down at my table and asks, do you know random person? And I proudly say no. Can he dunk? Is his shot too flat? What are we working with here? And boy did I get a surprise. They go, well first off, he's in special ed, his dad is also in a wheelchair, and RIP, his mom just died, like a week ago. Now, I'm pretty dumbfounded to that. These people are very aware that if I miss two shots in a row, I have to go meditate away my demons. They must have been like, God, he's pretty good at pushing his demons to the side for the greater good. This kid needs that. 
Which I suppose makes some sense, but I wasn't trained. Can we get a mediator in here to help me? It was just me and the kid at a lunch table. At the time, the only two people that had really died in my life were my two grandpas. One of them was a party animal with mafia friends. And the other was a booster for UW-Madison, and they paid hookers to recruit players. Does that help at all, young man? So anyway, one time the kid was telling me about a family dispute where he ended up pushing his cousin down a flight of stairs. And you know, he seemed a little too proud of it, so that became my, like, mentor goal for the rest of our time together. Let's just make sure this kid knows that you don't push people downstairs when you get angry. Words do hurt, yes, but not as much as a compound fracture. You can call me a cut as much as you want, little buddy. Don't push me down the stairs. So like every time we'd have lunch together, I'd basically end it with a, uh, what don't we do? Manslaughter, that's my little guy. So you know, father time waits for no one. There comes a time where we both graduate and we're into the real world now. I didn't know what really happened to him had heard that they were potentially homeless, you know, because they needed professional support, not a 16-year-old me. Well, one day after work in a town about an hour from where we grow up, I'm at a stoplight. I look to my right and I see my mentee in like a school shooter coat waiting to cross the street. So I kind of try to hide and dip beneath where you could see me in my car. I was going through things at this point in my life. I didn't need Menti re-entering it. My mom's sick, my dad's dead, I'm a mediocre fucking clown. Had a text that there was human feces on the floor waiting for me to pick it up when I arrive at home. Menti starts crossing the street when he realizes it's his lucky jackpot day. He notices a almost completely smoked cigarette in the street, and he jumped on that baby like a starving lion. He shakes it off a few times, you know, following smoker sanitation procedures. Lights the butt, takes a draw, and keeps on keeping on. And that pretty much taught me that happiness is really a choice, and leftover drugs are good enough for who it's for. The whole thing really made me think. Did I mess up this kid's life by telling him not to manslaughter? I'm sure there are times in the homeless community where you need to push someone down the stairs. And this poor sap has young me in his ear telling him, No! And you know, that feels like a good place to end this cautionary tale. Replacing the labor force with children? Probably isn't gonna work, everybody. On Wisconsin, on Wisconsin, we will hire your kid. Now we only have to pay the ambulance driver ten dollars. That's how Jesus would want it. Go Badgers, go Badgers. All right, you fucks, have a good one.